What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the image widget in Flutter. So on my screen right now you'll see a blank Flutter project. I have switched out the class that they give us to start with with my own simple stateless widget class named home. And the body is simply set to a container. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set the child to an image. And there are a couple different ways that we can use an image. The first way that we're going to take a look at is the network image. To access this, we can do dot, and then if we go to the bottom here, we see network. So the only required property that this takes is the path to the image. So I'm going to paste in this image here, and if we go to this URL, this is what we get. Now if we go back into our project and refresh, we see the image coming through. Now before we go ahead and look at any additional properties on the image widget, I want to go ahead and wrap this container here with another widget. And we're going to say safe area. Now what this safe area will do is it will take this image and it will move it below this notch here and the time and all of this stuff up top here. And it'll basically do that for any device you're on. So if you're not on an iPhone and you're on another phone that has something up top, it will always make sure that your content is visible. If we refresh, there we go. As you see, it drops it down. Now, if we go inside of this network image and we add a comma, we'll hit Option Shift F to format that up. We can start adding some properties. First, we're going to take a look at the width and the height. We can set those just like this. We'll say 300, and we will set the height also to 300. If we reset, you'll notice that something strange happens, and that is that the image is pushed to the right, and the height did not change. So to make the width and the height and other properties apply, we need to set something called the fit. And the fit is simply how we are positioning the image inside of our constraints. So we can use box fit, and you'll notice we have a couple of options. We have contain, cover, fill, fit height, fit width, none, and scale down. The one I usually like to use is cover. Go ahead and use that. We'll do a refresh. Now you'll see that the image is back to the upper left, and to see that that worked, we can now go ahead and say change the width to 400, and that should increase the width, and it does. If we use boxfit.contain, you'll see that the image is now centered in here. So it's not taking up the entire width that we give it. If we wanted to do that, we can go ahead and use boxfit dot fill, and this will fill the entire width. All right, so we're going to keep it at boxfit.cover. Now, the next property I want to look at is semantic label, and all this is is think of it like the alt text if you are using HTML. This is for screen readers or other accessibility tools. Now, another cool property we have with the network image is the ability to use a loader because by using network we are fetching this image and that takes time. So if for some reason it takes a second to fetch, we can display something to the screen rather than nothing for that second. For this we can use a loading builder. Now if I just do nothing in VS Code this will pop up. I can scroll down to the third one. You'll see context child loading progress. We'll tab on that. If I hover over this, the context is simply the build context. The child is of type widget. In this case, that would be the image. And then loading progress. This is an image chunk event, and this will have the ability to give us the status of the download. So we can say if loading progress is equal to null. If that is null, that means we have the image. So we can return the child, which like I said is this image, or this URL here. 
And if it's not equal to null, so we're loading, we want to return a center widget. And we can use any type of widget that we want here. You can use a circle progress indicator. You can use a progress bar. Or you don't even have to use that. You can use something else. In our case, we're going to use a circular progress indicator. And what we can do is we can set the value on that. First, we want to check that the loading progress dot expected total, total bytes is not equal to null. If that is true, we want to say loading progress dot cumulative bytes loaded, so how many bytes we have loaded currently, divided by the total expected number of bytes. And then we need our else null. Now when we fetch this image, we should see this circular progress indicator if the image is being fetched. Another common thing you might want to do with an image is round out these edges. So there's no property on the image widget to allow us to do that, but what we can do is we can wrap that with another widget. Refactor, wrap with widget, and the widget we want is clip r rect. And we want this because we, this has a property, border radius. We can set this equal to border radius dot. Again, you can choose the one you want. In my case, I'll go with circular, and I'll pass in maybe 50. Refresh this, and you see the corners are rounded. If we wanted to make it more subtle, maybe I'd go with 5. As you can see, now the edges are just slightly rounded. Now what if you wanted to display an image that was stored in your Flutter project? Well, you can do that as well. For that, we don't want the network image, we want an asset. Now that does not take a loading builder, so go ahead and get rid of that. Everything else stays the same, but we don't have this image in our folder. Let's actually go ahead back to this site, and let's go ahead and download this image. I'll save image as. We'll just name this computer. Now we have it right here. Go into your project directory, create a folder assets. Inside of here, create a new folder images. Now go ahead and drag the image you just downloaded into there. Here it is. Now what we can do is we can call that like this, assets slash images slash computer dot jpeg. And one last step, we need to open up pubspec.yaml, and if you scroll down to around line 47 through 50, you should see this here. So go ahead and uncomment this, remove this second line, add assets in front of this images. So now we have assets slash images, which is this directory here. We could replace this with computer.jpg, which will work. But if you wanted to import every image from this directory, assets slash, slash images, you could just remove this and leave this first part. And if you had two or three or more images in this images folder, it would import all of them. Now, if we give this a hard restart, there we go, we get the image. And this is not coming from the network, it is now coming from inside of our application. So that is it guys, that is how you can use the image widget in your Flutter application. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more computer science tutorials like this.